Uh, yeah, I hope that you're hearing me. Uh-huh. This is the future, all about cybersecurity. Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you. From the one and only legend, the cyber informer. Hey, yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer. Uh, this is the cyber reformer. Let's go. It's time for the Cybersecurity Business Connect and Protect Central Coast Q&A video. I am Michael Trimblett, the Cyber Informer, and today we'll be answering the question, what is the 321 backup rule? Backups of your data are important, whether it's your own personal data or whether you're a multinational corporation. We ask the question, how do you back up your data in a way that protects you from almost any failure scenario? In this video, we'll show you how the 321 backup rule keeps your data safe. Let's go. Question. What is the 321 backup rule? Answer. The 321 backup rule is an easy to remember approach to keeping your data safe in almost any failure scenario. Before we talk about the 321 backup rule, let's look at what the Essential 8 says about backups and why you would want to backup your data. Daily backups are an important mitigation strategy of the Essential 8. Daily backups relate to availability and integrity in the CIA triad and is designed to be part of a disaster recovery plan should the worst happen. To read about the Essential 8, go to https colon slash slash loyalit.com.au slash e8. This will redirect you to the government's website. System backups need to be secure, redundant, and tested to ensure recovery should they be needed. Backups are to be configured on key workstations and servers. Backup retention needs to be considered. Backup retention simply means how long backups are stored before they are overwritten. The Essential 8 recommends backups are stored for three months or greater. We will look at a robust backup solution in the how-to section of the Cybersecurity Academy when we look at Shadow Protect and Skykick backup solutions. For now, all we need to know these are considerations when creating a backup strategy. Why should you back up your data? Sadly, computers are unreliable. Even high-grade equipment can suffer from failures. This is why we have warranties. Much of the equipment I've come across in small-medium business is consumer-grade, meaning low cost and low quality. This means it's more susceptible to failure. I've mentioned before that I have five copies of my photos because these are irreplaceable. I do this not because I'm worried about a cyber attack. I'm worried because I don't trust my equipment. These days, hard drives use technology called solid-state drive technology. With that comes incredible speed. But unlike hard drives of the past, which tend to give you signs of failure, solid-state drives tend to work nicely until they don't. And then when they don't, they take all of your data with them. It is unlikely you'll recover your data from a failed solid-state drive. Computers fail. Don't fall into the false sense of security that they will always work, because they won't. And of course, the reason why we're talking about backups Your data is at risk from a cyber attack because systems are insecure. Let's have a look at the failure scenarios. I think everyone has had a situation where you either have restored your data from a backup or you have wished your data was backed up so you could recover it. Backing up your data to protect against a cyber attack is one reason why you would want to back up your data. But there are plenty of other reasons too. The most common cyber attack is ransomware. If you are attacked and your data is locked, Recovery from backups are the only way to get your data back without paying a ransom. Depending on the ransomware group, paying the ransom doesn't necessarily mean you'll get your data back. The most common reason for a backup is due to system failure. Hard drives can and do fail. When this happens, we need to rely on your backups. Theft is always a possibility. If all of your data is at your business and a thief comes through and clears it out, then you'll be stuck. I told a story about this on the Essential 8 Daily Backups informational video, so I won't rehash it now. Also consider someone who just wants to cause damage and not steal anything. Many years ago, the Loyal IT offices were broken into, vandalized, and non-critical, thankfully, computer equipment was stolen. Natural disasters can happen such as fire and flood. Living in Australia, we've seen both of these scenarios. It's unlikely to affect you, but if it does, you stand to lose everything. People can delete data by accident, and sometimes a malicious insider can delete your data intentionally. Sometimes you may need to go back to a previous version of a document because you edited it and fouled it up. It happens, that's why we have backups. File corruption historically is another common reason to restore data. Have you had your computer on and the power has gone out or the network connection dropped? Then after that, your document is unreadable? It's not so common these days because software is designed with this in mind, but it does happen. Reminder. Sync tools like Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive are not backups. These tools sync your data to the cloud. Any deletions or changes are synchronized to the cloud too. 
Whilst it is nice to have a copy of data in the cloud in these services, sync tools do not conform to the 321 backup framework and it will not save you from a cyber attack. The 321 backup rule is a popular backup framework. The Essential 8 doesn't recommend a framework, however, the 321 backup rule is recommended by the United States government and has worked for me during the entirety of my IT career. The 321 backup strategy is broken down into its components, which are three copies of your data, that is your live data, plus at least two copies, two different media. For example, your backups are stored on a NAS and a USB hard drive. You are not restricted to these types of backup media. It's just what is most convenient and cost effective. This has changed over time. I remember back when I first started in IT, this was floppy disks. One off-site. The data copy is taken off-site or synced off-site via the internet. As we have discussed in the previous slides, this is very important. Taking the backups off-site helps protect you from fire, flood, theft, or any other disaster that may occur at the business premise, including vandalism. Do not store your backups on site, even in a fireproof safe. It has been proven that in some cases, fireproof safes heat up enough to melt the backup media in the event of a fire. How does the 321 backup process work? For that, we'll need a propeller hat zone. This section is rated half a propeller hat out of five as we'll be talking about the process of the backup. The backup runs at least once daily, preferably multiple times. Once complete, backup logs should be checked for errors. Logs should be emailed for convenience. Backups are then transferred to removable mass storage. The mass storage device should be removed and another mass storage device plugged in. The mass storage device should be taken off-site. I recommend a mass storage device for each day of the work week. We covered this in the Essential 8 Daily Backups video, but let's see how this works again, as this is very important to understand. This image shows on the left-hand side of the screen your server. In the middle of the screen, we have your NAS backup device, and on the right-hand side, we have the Monday USB drive. We can see your home up in the top right-hand side there, which is presumably away from the office. And on the right-hand side, piled up, we have the other backup drives for each day of the work week. The server backs up to the network attached storage or NAS device. The NAS then syncs to the portable mass storage device. In this diagram, it is a USB hard drive labeled Monday. At close of business Monday, the USB hard drive is then taken home at night and stored in a secure location. The next drive in the rotation is brought back to the office and plugged into the NAS. The backup runs to the NAS, and then the data is synced to the Tuesday device and the process repeats for each working day of the week. In this scenario, both the NAS and the USB hard drives should have enough capacity to store three months worth of data. In most cases, a few terabytes are more than enough to meet this requirement of the Essential 8, exiting the propeller hat zone. Now we know how the 321 backup works. The Essential 8 recommends testing the backups regularly. Regular backup checks should happen quarterly or biannually at least. You may ask why do you need to test the backups regularly when the backup reports indicates everything is okay. The backup reports indicate the backup is running when scheduled. It doesn't tell you if the data you are backing up is corrupted or not. Corruption can occur if part of the system is failing. It may not be obvious that the system is failing, but it could be failing enough to cause damage to your data. The only way you can tell is by restoring the data and ensuring it is accessible. The Essential 8 recommends performing a partial restore of your data quarterly or a full restore of your data when major infrastructure changes, such as a new server is bought online or a new product is installed on the network. This can be harder to achieve in small medium business. It depends on how your systems are structured. Enterprise tend to have duplicate servers used to recover data for testing. This setup is not something small business is able to afford. So we typically will opt for a partial restore to test backups. What did we learn? We learned more about the 321 backup rule. We learned many reasons why backups are important not just to protect against cyber attacks. We re-looked at the backup process. We talked about testing the backup and why this is important. Thank you for joining me for a look at the 321 backup rule. Cyber threats are not the only reason to back up your data. Equipment failure is just as much as a threat as ransomware. The 321 backup rule is as good as it gets for small and medium business. Don't forget, you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Also, check out the podcast. Visit loyalit.com.au slash podcast for more information. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh, yeah. This is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down like, oh, yeah. This is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down, yeah.